this to you. And everybody calls you Pringle. You were saying like you got that like back when you started playing sports, right? The nickname. Yeah, well, I think <clears throat> back then the coaches can't remember any of you. And so Pringle's a little unique. And it's also can be associated with a chip. It's like a brand. <laughs> It'd be like if your name was, you know, Goodyear. Like, coach is going to be like, Goodyear, you know. So Pringle, I just was called Pringle from very young. I don't know. But that it really sucks because when you Google you, the first thing that comes up is everybody thinks that you are associated with Pringles chips, which is completely not true. I've been dealing with it my whole life. It's not a bad problem. You know, it's, it's. I mean, I, I at one point I knew who owned it. It was like Frito-Lay or something. <laughs> and I'd be like, Frito-Lay owns it. You know, I don't, I don't know anything about it. But um, for some reason, kids did kind of jab at me about it when I was little, which was just silly to me. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. When you Google me, uh, th- there could be worse things that come up. It is. Actually, you know what? It's true. And I was saying to you, I was saying this to you right before we started the interview. But what I really enjoy, I actually never really watched Southern Charm until until the um, like lockdown. And then I got into okay. it. I, and I feel like I got into it in the best season. Like, the reunion was fire. I mean, Craig being hammered and just, like, saying whatever the fuck you... It was so... I, yeah. I just was like, this is, like, the best television. Craig was hammered. What was or he- as you say, shot out of a cannon. I don't know. I mean, we were kind of in, we're in quarantine in the optics of that, you know. Um, I mean, the guys, we, we certainly got together and imbibed, to say the least, that night... I pulled the uh, ripcord and took a landing gear, like to sleep, because I was just like, "All right, first reunion, no no idea what to expect." Um, I think he may have kept going. I don't know, but when I saw him there, I was just kind of like, "Holy shit!" And when he was like, "Trash, your trash can," it was was like so intense. I was like, "Holy, this is all right. It's going down." I mean, it's going down, and luckily, I'm not. You know, I'm not involved in any of that stuff, really. I I mean, I was, you know, I I definitely came at Austin a little bit in the beginning and I regretted it just because it was stupid. But and we're actually buddies now. So I I work out with him a fair amount. I Uh, heard that. Yeah. yeah. So we're like lifting buddies, as cheesy as that sounds, Hans and Franz. Um, and yeah, I don't know. That was intense. It was great. I thought everybody was was great. I was just supposed to kind of make jokes. Oh, well, I, I thought you fit in perfectly. I mean, you oh, seem so, you seem so chill, and you kind of seem to walk into this friends group like I, I don't know. I got the vibe from you. You're like the, you care the least. You give the least fucks about you know society and being famous. I don't. Maybe you fake it. Maybe you're the one that wants to be the most famous. But you, you, I, I liked your laid back attitude. You seem like an observer, like we are watching. I, I well, that's a, I think that's that's a, that's funny you say that. I I was watching stuff go down as an observer a lot of the time, and kind of was like, holy shit. Um, it's just not my style to like amp it up if it's not really there. I mean, I'm always kind of even until I'm not, and that can be not so great. So I kind of try to keep it between the lines. Um, but I don't really care about, I mean, I don't know if I, don't, I fit in. I mean, and I get along with those guys because I think I'm kind of a maniac and, and it, 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 it I don't, we just clicked. I mean, in a way, you know, those guys are great. Um, <laughs> I mean, they and, seem and like think, a blast. Yeah. Oh, yeah, well, they're definitely in blast. I mean, they're maniacs. Uh, as Shep told me at the beginning, he was like, Pringle, you're going to love, uh, you know, Craig, Austin, Whitney. They're all degenerates like us, you know. And, and, and he's saying that in a, as a term of endearment, kind of like it, we all we all gravitate to people who might have kind of a, something a bit off with more, with most piece, people in society. Like they look at you and go, all right, so there's something off, but it's not like wrong. It's just like maybe there's something a little different in the water when you grew up. Well, and you and Shep, okay, you guys, like you were saying, go way back. So you were college fraternity brothers. Was that how you met him? Yeah, we were we were fraternity brothers at Georgia and Chi Phi. And okay, so Shep and I, I've heard you guys both have maniac stories. Like, what was one of the craziest things that that Shep that you two did together? <laughs> there's no, <clears throat> there's no real crazy like. Uh, you know, animal house tour. I mean, every, I was there for like about a year when he was there 
or may, you know, it's an interesting thing. I left and went to work on the trading floor in the middle of college because I was doing terrible in school and I was just ripping it. I was partying way too hard. Not to sound like a cliche, but I mean, so I was like, well, I'm going to go to New York and go to theater school, which I did for a year. I figured out I'm a pretty bad actor, but it still got me to New York, you know, in a way. And I started working and trading. So I would come back and that's where we'd hang out. But every, I'm not going to go into details, but, you know, a lot of um, extracurriculars, you know, for game days and just kind of just let, you know, playing through all night. I mean, you just stuff that is every weekend, but I, nothing, I don't have like a, we got arrested together, you know? Oh, that would be really good. Yeah. Or what you stole. But I was going to say you're, you're not that old, but I feel like it's like my experience probably, which was social media was just sort of starting in co- So like, you're so lucky because none of it was probably videoed like it would be now. No, that wasn't, yeah, none of that was around and that stuff still scares me to this day. I know. Uh, yeah. Hey, yeah. by the way, you've stayed fairly controversy free, though. But I, what I feel like is scary for you guys as reality show people now is is there's this real trend of people digging up all your shit from like 20 years ago. Is that like are you? Worried I mean, about I've that? had I've had my share of mustard sandwiches in the clink and they can probably find it. But like <laughs> um, most of it's like standard had a few too many, like I said, at a Georgia game or something, although I never got arrested in Athens. But I don't think there's anything to, uh, you know, my ex, my ex-wife and I get along great pretty much a lot of the time. Sometimes we're all, they're always going to be little hiccups here and there. And sure. I think we work through them, but um, I, yeah, I mean, I, they kind of tell you in the beginning, they're like, Hey, you know, you need to go look at your social media. Luckily I'm not active on Twitter. I don't. I think it's kind of an evil, like a mean platform. It is. It's um, terrible. I don't like Facebook, even though Instagram's owned by them. I mean, I'm going off on a tangent, but yes, not having those is great. Yeah, you know, it worked I mean, in I, your favor. I had a different one that was like you know pre, basically pre-divorce. I did. I just did wipe everything when I got divorced. I just like kind of started over with a new account. I don't even know why. Hey, and okay, so it does seem like you get along well with your ex, but I see people always ask online why you two actually did get divorced. What, why? Yeah, I think it's very interesting to people, but I don't really talk about it because it's just something I I had. Well, one, it's, you know, everybody that gets divorced, especially with the kids, is going to say it's like the biggest failure in your life, and it is. So it's not something I really talk about. Mm-hmm. I just wasn't, I wasn't, uh, it just wasn't working. Um, and I don't really dive into any of that, just... Yeah, I don't, I don't talk about it. I think that that makes people want to ask more. It's kind of waned. <laughs> it's the worst. Until yeah. now, until you just now. <laughs> but let me tell you, they asked me plenty on the show, and I was like, you know, you know what matters? It's the, it's. I also do look at that. You know, I say, it's that was five or six years ago, way before any of this. It's just not something I talk about to anybody. You know, or try not to. How is your dating life now, though? Because I have to imagine. I mean, okay, you come on this show. This. <laughs> Oh, you don't give yourself enough credit. You're a good looking guy. You work out. I mean, you work out with Austin. You two both are like hot. You know, I mean, there was the whole blog like dedicated to how ugly I was. It was hilarious. I loved it. And that stuff I'm here for. Like that. Well, that wait, really, wait. That's what freaks people out is that I love shade. Like, I think it's like if it's good and funny, I'm like, that's the greatest thing ever. Oh, you have I a knew what I signed humor. up for. I knew what I signed up for. And I can tell you, I've watched a few of these seasons and it's not like I'm not sitting there throwing shade at my TV, you know, being like, you know, just look at this ass clown. And so I think it's great. I think it's like a badge, you know, in a way, like it's not like Don Rickles is roasting you, but it's like, if people care enough to kind of come at you, it's, I mean, and they're good. Yeah. 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 It's kind of funny. Well, no, but you've kind of had like a major come up. Like you've like lost weight. You look like way hotter. So what do you do? Are you just, it's just working out and like, wait, when was I fat when I was married? (laughs) No, I don't know. No, you weren't ever fat. There was just one video, I think, of you, like, uh, on YouTube, where you just look a little chunkier. That's all. Oh, that's where I'm playing. <laughs> Am I playing music in Charlottesville? <clears throat> but I don't want to be fat shaming you. Now I seem like I'm fat shaming you on this show. I don't care. I was you know, fat. Remember when you were fat? <laughs> now I actually, I will tell you, true, this is true. <clears throat> Sorry. I got into a bar fight, and I tore my knee up. And then I went to Charlottesville. And my knee was not better for a year. 
And um, I just, I really, I started bartending and like all we did was, I, it was really kind of a mess. We drank, I played music and then I did nothing active <laughs> at all. And I ate like a trash can. And so I probably was like really out of shape. And that video, I'm like, God, I gotta get this off. But I kind of like the version of that song I did. I mean, that, that's also, it's like 25 degrees. It's eight in the morning. So I'm wearing all this like frumpy I didn't dress to be filmed. You had like a hoodie on. Yeah, you know, like I got there and she's like, we're going to, you know, she's like, I'm going to act like, you know, they have this little thing back then. They didn't really, iPhones had just come out. It was like 06. But um, no, I know that video. Yeah, I was. I was really out of shape. In fact, my ex-wife the other day, she goes, you know what I was thinking about the other night? How fat you got when we were married. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I know. And I was like, I think, I think that. Oh, uh, God. I don't think it was like fat. It was just out of shape and like, and I'll tell you, like un, unhappy and not like I think being active kind of saved my life. I, went, I started going to the Y after I split, and there's like this big statue of Bill Walton. Do you know who he is? Bill Walton. Big, he's like played for the uh, UCLA and he played for the, um, I believe he played for the Lakers. But okay, he took a lot of LSD. He's a big dead fan. Okay. Anyway, there's a statue of a mountain the Y that says the Y saved my life, and I always thought, huh. I think, the, you know, maybe this will say, I don't know. I started to get, I just got after it. I do a bunch of stuff. I'm 44. It's not easy. <laughs> oh, great. Okay. I'm going to be 40 next year. So, all right. Okay. Well, let me tell you, once you, it's all down. <laughs> Shit. Is it really? Everything started falling apart. 40. Yeah. Well, you do, you, well, you look like you're super in shape now, but I mean, what do you eat? Did you change like the way, are you like a super clean eater now or not really? I am. Well, I try. I don't know. Is this, is this what the public wants? <laughs> My diet? No, I do. Uh, though. I'm just I would say, curious after 40. No, I, I do. Strangely, back to like that saved my life. Like there is a time. I, I've always said this is that I don't mind being divorced except for the time apart from the kids while I'm kind of sorting this out. Uh, getting divorced is another story like that. I don't wish on anybody. So I started out. It kind of kept my mind clear. Like whenever I was really. So I started rowing and then running and then biking lifting and then it's doing all of it to where people kind of think I'm crazy, but that's just kind of how it happened. And now my brain kind of needs it. Yes. Right. You feel so much better. Yeah. Yeah. So I know. And, uh, and okay. So how are you, but I, I was starting to ask you this, is it weird to date now? Cause you're not like a huge celebrity, but you are a celebrity. Yeah. It's the understatement of the year. Yeah. I'm not a huge celebrity. <laughs> I'm on a reality show and I'm like an extra. Um, <laughs> yeah, but you're like so, the best extra out there. Like, I think you... I'm actually a cast member. No, I mean, I, I, it, it is like the new guy, but uh, it's it's very sweet and, and, and it is gratifying and humbling and all that when somebody seems um, like their day has been made better by running into you. It's also very confusing in a way because I'm like, oh, God, this person has no idea what a loser I am. But apparently this is uh, yeah, I do a lot of self-deprecating, but. That's nice. Dating, um, I still haven't, I've dated a little bit. Uh, I do think that's a slippery slope sometimes. Well, I, I know, because I wonder reality. if, has anybody tried to use you basically just to be on the show? You know, you like, I mean, or. Yeah, I don't think so. Okay, that's I, good. I, I haven't experienced, I don't think, I mean, I maybe have had, have talked to somebody and felt that after a few just text conversations, it's usually like Instagram. That's really kind of like dropping in the DM, shooting your shot. Um, I have had some moments, I guess, pretty rare where I was like, this person just kind of wants to. Yeah. 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 You can tell they're like I'm seeking this. fame. Yeah. 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 Do, do yeah women... well, they'll, they'll do like what thing is they'll, 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 we'll be talking. And I'll, I answered a bunch in the beginning. I think that's kind of like the, the, the rookie mistake is it, as I want to be really kind, but then like, it, then it starts going <clears throat> and then they'll be like, so what's up? Like there was one that like started showing up all over the Island and stuff. And it was kind of weird, but like, um, I think that person was also dim, like everybody kind of figuring out where we hang out. Cause it's not, it's not a secret. Like we're all bombed up at Mex one. I mean, it's, yeah, you know, it's pretty obvious. I'm kind of rambling. Sorry. No, I, that's my entire show. Uh, yeah. so now when you get DMS, like, do you, are, I feel like you're a guy, like do older women really love you. A lot of them are, um, a lot of of women that do message me are, you know, older. I mean, I'd say at my age, and maybe some oh. a little older. Uh, and a lot of 
really sweet messages about being a single parent. I think that resonates with some single yeah. moms, maybe. I don't know. Oh my god! You're kind yeah. of in a club, you know. You're in this like club that nobody wants to be a part of, but yeah, one hundred. Yeah, I mean, I don't. I'm not kidding. Like, there are no like influencers like messaging me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, I kind of be like, I, I feel like correct. you need to go after J Lo. I mean, you guys had an A Rod blow up. Why aren't you shooting your shot with J Lo? Like, fuck it. You guys are like one step away from that. That's a that's a very flattering amount of credit you're giving me <laughs> <laughs> that I'm gonna. Well, you know, dude, you look as good as Ben Affleck. Like, you're not giving yourself he, enough credit. Like, he wrote Good Will Hunting, or at least a part of it. <laughs> All right, I well, he written, has that. I haven't written anything that's as good as that. Um, I love Ben Affleck, actually. I think he's great. Uh, hey, by the way, when you went into that reunion, did you have any idea that it was A Rod that Madison? Like, did you guys all really know behind the scenes? <laughs> um, well, uh, I had heard about, I did not know. Cause it's there was like, so on the way up, I, on the way up, I, I sat with her and I saw an email, but I just, I didn't, I think it was about the football player, which has been out there a bunch like Jay Cutler, which he was divorced. I don't, yeah, so, so I didn't really think much of it. I was just as shocked really, because like, you know, I'm kept on the outside of most of that stuff. I'm not, I, I had my kids a lot of the filming time. Um, so yeah, you know, I can't really speak to all that stuff. Like I just, I didn't know anything about it. Well, who knew? I mean, that was what was fascinating about your season is like, you guys like blew up a pop culture, you know, relationship there uh, four years. I mean, it was like, oh damn, that was really a run. Cause I, I was like, ah, you know, who knows? And then when it was confirmed, I was like, oh shit. And then when they broke up, you lumped me in, I didn't blow anything up. I was just there making jokes. I don't. No, you. I mean, obviously, you had no part of that. But I was just like, I wonder how much of a secret that really was off camera, I didn't or know was about it? it. I, I did not. I did not know about it. And I. I and it. And it. That was. That really was the first. Uh, that I heard of it. That. <laughs> That was the first I heard of, of the of the Alex Ra, you know, A Rod or whatever that thing was. Facetime. I'm not sure. I feel like you. This question, like you, probably give zero shits. But do you feel like you're rooting for uh, Madison and A Rod to actually get together? I'm not a big A Rod fan. I mean, it's like, I, I mean, because you're a huge baseball fan, aren't you? You're just like, I'm you... a big baseball fan. I'm, I'm, and I'm, I'm, and I'm right now. I'm watching my Hawks blow up the 76ers, and uh, I'm a huge Georgia fan. I'm a huge Braves fan. I know. I saw that you're a big so, Braves fan. If she was dating a Brave, I'd be like probably go for it uh but i don't i i don't what are you gonna do if season nine is shot with madison A-Rod. and a-rod and and you don't, don't like I don't, it i don't think they would ask me to be on that <laughs> <laughs> you really think they're gonna cast me on that yeah, now i'm gonna be like a-rod i got designs on madison a-rod fuck you you're a horrible baseball player she's like the richest one ever but um what's the deal you don't like the yankees or you just season, didn't i i don't know what uh, you know, Madison and I have always gotten along. She's been very kind to me. So uh, I wish her the happiness. I know she went, I think, Instagram public with a new guy. She did. So I don't think I don't think that it's I, I have not met that guy. So I, I don't I don't know anything about him. Seems nice. I'm sure. Um, but uh, yeah, season nine, Madison and A-Rod, Mad Rod. Rod, what would they call Mad it? Mad Rod, I like that. Can really? you imagine? Can you imagine you're in Charleston and all of a sudden they're like, "Hey, this season, you know, low key, you guys are going to be shooting with A Rod." Like, what are you in A Rod? Be hilarious. Like? I think it'd be hilarious, but <laughs> <laughs> that's like that's pretty far fetched. A Rod, <laughs> have you heard? I, I love too. By the way, people are saying that Madison's new guy looks like Craig, which I think is hysterical. Uh. Yeah. You don't see maybe. it? I don't know. I haven't. I'm sorry. Like, this is here I am. It's just the same old, same old boring Pringle. But I haven't done it. I, I didn't look that closely. No, I, I did love get it. Jay, I got shade thrown at me. Like, now this is a smoke show. And I was like, what? You know what I mean? I was like, what did I do? But that's, I think that's funny. You know, I'm like, yes, relevant, sort of. But. How many? Uh, yeah, he, he's, he's closer to Craig than I think he is to Austin. Yeah, he does, right? How many of Craig's pillows do you own? Zero. <laughs> What's the deal? He hasn't given you any? 
I haven't gotten one. He he did buy. Uh, I, I made this hat. It's a duck. My son drew named Quacker, and I I put it on there just because I thought it was but fun, and it made him happy. Craig bought one, which is very sweet. Um, I went to his opening party, and he does not need Pringle. Need a uh, I'm a sit third person. Need uh, my support. <laughs> He's doing really well. But I didn't. I, I'm actually. I'm moving again, so I'm in a rental with the boys. And then I think I'm coming back to this, and it's furnished, so I, I don't have room for anything. But I, I'll need to pick one up. Maybe he'll make a quacker one. He needs to. And, yeah. no, it's been fun to see, like, how your businesses all take off. Like, yeah, you need way more products because his is popping off. His is popping off. I mean, he's in year – going into year eight. Uh, so, yeah, he's done well. You know, I've just met him in, over the last year and a half, and I am still can say I'm proud of him, you know. Oh my like, God! Uh, yeah, for to go from, you know, self-made pillow magnet. Um. So, and you were we were saying this like before we started, but it looks as though there is a season eight happening. Yes, like it. All signs point to yes. We should we should start filming in the fall. I think that's the normal schedule. I won't. I wouldn't know because I only filmed this one crazy. Sorry, I'm looking around for kids. That's one crazy. Um, that's fine. COVID season, which was just completely apparently an outlier and not normal. So I'm still, so next season will be, uh, there'll be a learning curve again, I think if, you know, but I think it is, I think that they say yeah, we're coming back. I don't have a hard confirm. So. Yeah. So you're just kind of waiting, but you you would obviously be on board. You had a good enough experience. You're like, I'll come back. Yeah. I really enjoyed it. I, I enjoyed, I loved every, I liked the cast. I loved the cast and I love the, everybody that worked on the show. Really? Up and down the line. Yeah. Great people. I mean, I, I really enjoyed it. And I've worked, um, I always say this, but it's kind of like everybody should work in food and bev at some point. Well, if you're going to be in television in some in some way, you should work on the other side of production too because you know, I mean, how hard it is. I mean, it's a slog for those, for the people, you know, PAs all the way up to the cameraman, all the way up to the producers. That they're always, they're always working. Yeah. So I felt like it gave me at least a uh, perspective and you know I, I was pretty grateful to be a part of it do you like it in a way okay because obviously you started out you wanted to be an entertainer you're a singer songwriter you went to acting school then you you kind of discover you're not an actor but yeah. now in a way yeah. you are it's come full circle and you're in the entertainment business so is this sort of what you wanted to manifest are you okay that i drink on this podcast yes is oh my god weird? yeah i'm and, at the beach like um, i mean i've had a woman that suns her I, butthole on this podcast like you can do anything like, she does what <laughs> she suns her butthole have you seen that you need to start doing that because you're like into fitness now apparently sunning your butthole gives you like incredible energy you haven't seen this trend no oh my god you gotta uh, google do, it where do you where do you do, you do it at, at the beach anywhere, anywhere. this anywhere. chick's name is metaphysical megan and she sits out and suns her butthole for like two minutes every day. She says it's like she's the best energy ever. Okay. All right. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. So look, you can say anything uh, on this show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And drink. Uh, what was the question that I've somehow felt asked backwards into this yeah, thing? Yeah, you feel like you've manifested your entertainment goal in a way. Like you wanted to be in, in you know, obviously more of a singer-songwriter. And you've toured as an artist. But – you're in the entertainment business. Is this what you had kind of thought you wanted to end up in? No, I didn't see this in a million years. Um, and I knew Shep on the show season one. So I've watched it and I was like, God, I don't know how he does that. And then um, very organically how it all happened. Uh, some of my picture was given and then, you know, there's a process, but um maybe, I don't know. It was really, I, I, I it's a strange thing. Because I never even knew really how to feel about it, and then I and then when I started it, I I enjoyed it. I really liked it. I, Just because I like, I mean, like I said, I, I mean, if you get along with the, all, everybody you're working with, and it's makes for a nice life. Yeah, I, I know. It's just I thought I think that's kind of interesting how you started out, and then now you're in a form of entertainment for sure. I mean, when I met everybody, I was like mortified. I'm not mortified. I was like, "What well, is happening?" Because it was it was a lot more than I expected, as far as uh, you know, a, 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 you know, kind of the production. Like I was taken aback for a bit. Yeah. But, but I got used to it. And so what do you do now? Okay. Are you still a commodities trader? Are you still like. 
Well, I'm doing a few things, and yes, I am still trading, but COVID was, let's just say, dicey. Um, it turned some commodities into energy commodities, especially into like UFOs. So I pulled out of a lot of stuff and now I'm starting like three or four just kind of side businesses while I dabble here and there in crypto and stuff like that. It's not, it's not super interesting, but I'm, it's not done, but I'm, I'm, I'm looking into buying a, a, a Charleston establishment, big bar restaurant, uh, over the next couple of months and kind of moving into more of a food and Bev, um, area or experience business there, but also just doing little side hustles um but yeah i'm still trading yeah what's what i'm do- trying is- to do is, is have it uh control my life which it can do oh right because you have to be i'm sure you have to be like looking at the trends all the time everything that's happening yeah if you're doing day trading I, what, what would i do now is put on long-term options and i don't have to actually just track it all the time should i be buying amc and gamestop like what's the deal no, definitely not be buying that total pieces of shit I mean, if you can get in when they're doing that crazy thing, I mean, I don't think either of those stocks are worth anything. But wait, here, isn't this the deal, though? If you buy GameStop or AMC, you you actually have to go against the whole premise, right? Because if you're going to make money, you got to sell when everyone's buying, right? And that not that wholly like everyone tells you to hold because you're basically trying to short the shorters? They're trying to run out the short sellers, yes, and hit stops, which makes it go parabolic and like crank, you know, to these weird, insane levels because people just have to get out because they're over leveraged. Um, I have not been following that. I would say, if you can, I'd be, I would be shorting those those weird stocks. GameStop and AMC are not worth where they're trading. Oh, I- my, and it's all you know what that's all it is. It's my opinion. So. Yeah, no, 100%. I mean, is anyone going to go to a movie theater anymore? I, you know, it's... I don't know. I mean, Tom Cruise is betting on it. I know that. He's like, Top Gun, <laughs> theaters only. <laughs> I mean, oh, my great. God. I know. Hey, did you watch any other reality shows, like, before you were on this one? Were you, I mean, obviously, you'd watch Southern Charm, but are you, like, a reality show guy? I don't True see you. Story. In... <laughs> um, I watched <laughs> The Real World when I was younger. Okay. The first one. And then, um, hey, buddy. Then I I watched this one a little bit. Okay. Here and there, in and out. Yep. Not like not like dedicated. Not like every week I gotta, I gotta watch it. I watched. I watched Chef. I I watched. No, I didn't. I don't think like. You weren't like a bachelor guy all these years. No, no, no. You know no. what? You could be on The Bachelor. Have they approached you? You'd be so good on that, too. You could find love there. They'd be like, how many disappointed ladies can you fit into one room when I get out of a limo? I'm like, hey, everybody. <laughs> oh, hey, it's Pringle. The schlub. <laughs> Um, no, I have not been approached by anybody to do a dating show. Oh my God. You would be amazing on the bachelor. Would you ever consider that if they came to you, if ABC, I mean, they, they honestly need you. I mean, that franchise is in free fall. Chris Harrison's been canned. He's so, oh, yeah. he got, he got canceled, huh? He's canceled. He's done after 20 seasons. <laughs> the poor guy. And all he did was defend. All he did was say, Hey, I think, the, I mean, maybe he went a little too far. I thought he apologized. I really thought they were going to bring him back, but maybe. I whatever. So it's just that there's a that's that's the world we live in. It's the world you know, we live that, in. And that's scary in a way too for for people that do this kind of thing. I mean, you know, everybody can sometimes say something that's regrettable. I mean, it's just if you're on camera, then you're done, and that's you know. I know. I don't, I, did, I don't even know what he said. I just I know it was. I heard it was racially insensitive, so I didn't I didn't see it. But you know. No. You so. Uh, yeah, peace out. But, oh, my God, you'd be great. I mean, you would revive that franchise. Well, that's very kind. Thank you. I think I would really be the death blow, but okay. <laughs> the, death, the final yeah. season. Oh, yes. my God. Uh, well, Pringle, you're. I just. I really wanted to have you on because, like I said, I just thought you were one of the coolest um, reality people. Most, I think a lot of people are on there edging for, you know, on some of these housewives, they're, like, edging for an angle or, you know. And I just thought it was cool to see somebody who also seemed like they were, like, oh, shit, I guess I'm just observing this whole thing, like like the audience. It was very cool. Well, thanks. No, I appreciate you having me on. I mean, I, I will give Shep credit. He, he told me. I I go any advice and he was like really you should talk to Austin because he's new he's like I'm so what is it disconnected from the you know from being new 
I'm not really coming across right, but he said, don't force anything. Ah. Um, and if you do, the camera can tell, and more importantly, the audience can tell. And I thought, because I have seen, um, I've seen some housewives like clips, and I'm like, that looks, you know what I did? Hold on. I lied. I did watch Vanderpump Rules. Oh, you did? Vanderpump. Okay, okay. Yeah. I actually, I actually lived out there, and I randomly worked with an artist for Tom Shoes, and Tom, not Sandoval, the other one. Do you know the show? Uh, you know what? I'm really not a big fan of Tom. I know. Okay. Well, either way, he's become uh, he's become a big Bravo guy, huge. And he was not on it though. His girlfriend was this girl, Katie. Okay. And now they're married. But um, in any case, they got married on the show. But like. He came and painted with me for a couple of days, me and this buddy of mine, uh, he's an artist out there. And so I met him and he was like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm trying, like I'm trying to get on. That was my first kind of entree into like the reality world. So I started, I started watching a little bit when he, when he got on there. I think that's so but cool yeah. that there was never your intention and then you were picked up. All right. I do want to ask you this though. Cause I think, I feel like you have a cool life philosophy or at least you're like, you know, you're about sort of, I like the self deprecating and I think you're about kind of finding happiness. So what do you like, what do you read and consume? You obviously work out that kind of energizes you. Are you a big meditation guy? Are you a big, like, uh, you know, ayahuasca dude? Like, what are you into? I don't do either of those things. <laughs> Isn't ayahuasca like tripping, <laughs> like throwing up in a tent well, or something? Well, ayahuasca is supposed to be the, 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 like the hot new, you know, you go to like these retreats and you do like an ayahuasca yeah. journey of like finding yourself and, you know, any past trauma, resolving it through ayahuasca. Not you. I'm not interested in finding any of those things, especially on some journey on some hallucinogenic drug. I'm doing the best I can to repress all of that. <laughs> um, that's what I focus on. I don't meditate mainly. Uh, no, I just do a bunch of exercise and then I play the guitar. I'm, I've been trying to write some more um, and just kind of focusing on uh, trying to get these, these new businesses started as well as the old one, you know, keep it going. And, you know, uh, when you have being little, a yeah, dad, yeah, yeah, focusing on my kids as much as I can. I mean, I, I go out there. One thing about that I didn't love about the season. <clears throat> the only thing I didn't love is that, they said, I only see them like, you know, this certain amount of time. And that was here. Like I, I fly out there a bunch, uh, you know, sometimes as much as once a month for like a week, 10 days, sometimes 15 days. So yeah, that's true. I do spend a lot of time out there with them. Um, and that I give a lot of credit to their mom for helping to facilitate that because, you know, she lets me stay there and we, uh, they call it nesting or something like that where you don't move the children you know yeah you have a good you know it sounds like and you've yeah. always said this on the show you have a good co-parenting relationship which is really yeah important definitely. yeah for those guys give her, her, her a lot of credit for that you know and they did make it they also kind of made it seem shady as to why you moved back to charleston why oh I, yeah yeah they did make well i don't know if it was shady I, it's just un i was just it was hard for me to explain because it was basically like i just was failing out there you just needed at, yeah. at business and like i i just was like you know what i gotta i gotta go yeah you gotta i don't go. even know how to explain i was like i just i gotta go i gotta go and then i was back in three weeks and it was this thing and i and i was here and then i was in and, and then all of a sudden you know this started happening i was in charleston i was like it, it was just very it was organic and kind of crazy but when they everybody wants these like hard line answers i don't have them i'm like i couldn't even tell you what happened like I was just, I was just kind of lost. And I mean, I think, I think that a divorce, you know, or something like that can do that. It's very traumatic. You can just kind of like lose, like I, maybe I needed to go find myself with some ayahuasca, but I, like, I couldn't, you know, I just, I failed out there. So oh, yeah, that was well, it. You... that's basically what I say on the show. I'm like, I failed. <laughs> like I was a big fat failure. No, I thought it was great. It was so truthful. And I feel like lots of times that's actually missing on reality is like people really just telling their truth. Cause I think now it's so much about hawking your whatever product it is and like making it seem like, you know, all that's happening. At least a lot of the housewives do that shit. So what about yeah. your, are your boys, I mean, your boys must be really proud of you. Like, did they love the show? Did they, you know, you seem like you have a great relationship with them, at hey. least like on social and everything. 
No, I do have a great relationship with them. That is real. Uh, they don't give a shit. I mean, they think, I think it's pretty cool. You know, I think they like to see themselves. We definitely showed them, you know, when they were on it. And I was like, look how misbehaved you are. Um, <laughs> which just- isn't their, yeah, it's not their fault. I mean, it's like there's, you put a certain number of cameras on any kid at any time, they're going to act up, especially when there's people around. I'm like, am I going to be a yeller or be a doormat? I'm like, I think I'm going to be a doormat. <laughs> but, um, I me. Yeah, I would have. Not really. I mean, so, um, yeah, no, they don't care. Like, right now, they're like, are you feeling, like, they'll, they'll ask, like, you know, some questions here and there, but they're just kids. Yeah. You know? They're not, they're not impressed with anything I do, really. What do you think? Um, okay, this is sort of my last question for you because I, I just I like your life philosophy and you are very transparent. What do you think um, has been the ro- most rewarding or maybe like obviously you had a great time when you were younger? Um, what do you think has been like the biggest life change of being a dad? Oh, the biggest change. Well, I take this from my father who said this before my first son. He said, you know, your life doesn't truly really start until you have your first child. I don't even remember my former, I mean, I don't, I know it was pretty vapid and nonsensical and I thought everything was so important. And then it's like, none of it is right. And they say, when you have a child, all of a sudden you walk around with your heart on the outside of your chest. But I mean, the most rewarding is just like, I mean, that's a hard thing to, to pay. I mean, Oh my God. No, you just, what you said, just, you nailed it. Cause I just had a son. He's 10 weeks old. And it's so funny. It is this weird, like your heart is on your sleeve. All of a sudden, like all of a sudden you start thinking about the world and like all this shit that you never cared about before. Yeah. And it's like, and, and how your impact, like, I don't know about you, but for me, I just think about like, Oh my God, all my, how does the shit that I do like on my podcast or whatever impact other, not necessarily my son, but just like, is it having a good Im- impact on people? Is it funny? Is it like, I don't know. I never cared before if it hurt people or people didn't like, you know what I mean? I, I like that you said that. Oh, good. yeah. I mean, I, I think it's kind of like a weird, I don't want to sound like cheesy, but like, there's a weird kind of like, first of all, as you know, there's a different love. Totally. Felt. So like, that's one thing where you're like, whoa, even when you're like getting hazed by that baby the first two nights and there's meconium everywhere, calling in the night nurse to show you how to do a fucking swaddle for the 50th time, the YouTubing a swaddle, baby getting out of the swaddle, more meconium, uh, oh jaundice, God. not eating, all that stuff. You're like, oh my God, I'm so in love. Um, yes. And then there's like that enlightenment of like what you were saying, like all of a sudden there's a, there's a whole, I don't want to go into like a, interview with the vampire you know when he turns in and he starts seeing all these different things like it's like that's a weird analogy but it's like you start to see things very differently and i think you see them in a much better light in a way like you know i'm there with you 100 percent. and i i never thought i wanted to have a kid till like after 35 and then all of a sudden i was like oh, i really want to have this child and then you have the kid and it is it is hard to explain it's a complete life worldview change in the matter of weeks in the matter of weeks you start caring about a lot of certain things that really didn't cross your radar at all i can't really think of any examples i'm just kind of like no i understand for me caring about what they see excuse me i interrupted no go ahead no i mean just like what they see and like uh, like you know just like i now i'm like concerned about the war i mean this is all gonna sound ridiculous it's just no, it's not. I'm right there with you. It's like you yeah. worry about other countries, like cyber warfare. You learn, you start worrying yeah. about all that shit because you want it to be a better place for them. Whereas when you before you had kids, and in my 20s, I didn't give a fuck about any of that stuff. It was like whatever, you know. Oh yeah, okay. Well, that's no, really I, far away. I didn't care about elections. You know, right. I try. I got very political during the election, and I lost a lot of followers because, like, very, I'm very liberal, and I was very vocal about it. And I'm glad, you know, it's, 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 it's like, that's how we teach our kids in a way. Like, um, like I was very invested in this election where I'll tell you, sadly, like, you know, I probably wasn't invested in like 2008 or 2000, you know, like yeah, before sure. pre-Obama, I started getting into it with like, you know, Obama, but, um, and I mean, stuff like that. I don't know. Like, yeah. Like you care about the war. Who, who's leading the country. Who's and all that stuff. Yeah. No, you really I do. 
I was just kind of like pretty numb to it all. Oh, my God. Good for you. I didn't realize that you spoke up so much um, politically because that I'm sure you had some, you know, whatever. You're not going to make all fans. You're not going to make all your fans. No, I got I got a lot of. I mean, I've, I've I toned it down because they come after. I mean, there's a there's a certain rage. I think that there's a lot of people addicted to rage in this country and it comes out. And, it, and then all of a sudden it manifests into rage at, you know, at my kids. And I, and I can tell. I'm like, this person doesn't. Yeah. yeah. And so I just kind of. Steer, yeah. Just a little bit, yeah. Okay. Well, Pringle, I'm. thank you for your time. Like you're, like I said, I, I was a Ending fan. on that? <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Okay. So uh, like, people are after rah, your kids on social media and liberalism. Bye. Yeah, <laughs> see it, great. See it. No, that's <laughs> no, fine. No, no. I don't care. Like I said, I don't care. <laughs> okay, you know, no, we'll end on this. Um, Catherine Dennis, have you been following her transformation? I feel like she got one, one like so much you hotter. Know what? You know, I will she... say, Catherine looks great. She looks beautiful, and I love Caleb. Uh... Yeah. Okay. What's it? And and I think I heard you say this in other interviews too that you do not think she's racist. And I I, I thought I that was. She... Yeah, I thought that was I really know. nice. She's not racist. No. She's not racist. Um. No, she's great. I've only seen her once or twice. She's, she's. I'm not quite sure. Uh, I know she's here, and she looks great. In fact, it's funny because that transformation happened while we were on a break and and pre pre reunion, and I was like, who, who is that person? It's flying with us. No, I'm serious. I was like, because I, you see, I was walking on the back of the plane. We're all getting on together. I'm sitting next to Madison, da, 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 so on, so on. And then I'm like, who is this blonde? This like skinny, petite. And, it, and then all of a sudden, I didn't realize until we got off the plane, maybe. I don't know. Anyway. No, she, she looks, looks great. so fucking hot. And I hear that Happy Catherine and Madison share the same plastic surgeon, and I need their name because whatever she's done, like Catherine, she's she's gorgeous she looks like a million bucks she looks so good yeah i don't know i need i need his number two i need to get some work <laughs> i need to get my eyebrows trimmed they're joining my scalp my, my hairline and pringle goes I to the plastic to, surgeon there's another spinoff you know get this and you know one thing is like i shaved this for this interview today because i was looking really cavemaning but i didn't do it on the show i got a lot of stuff about that and that's the kind of funny stuff i'm like oh my god even whitney was like dude you're on a show like clean up the neck hair and so it's just funny the thing and i was like oh god i i maybe i care a little too little like you know like maybe i do need to clean it up a little bit <laughs> what do people say what do listeners what do people say about your neck beard they were oh, just... just grossed out rightfully so i guess it's like Ugh, you're disgusting <laughs> Clean it up, Pringle. So, oh my God, Pringle, you are God. a TV treasure. Um, oh, that's sweet. Let's send on that because you really put that on my tombstone. <laughs> a TV treasure. You really are. Right? I, like I said, I just I feel like there's it's hard to get genuine people, and I, I feel like it's like you and Kathy Hilton right now. Like there's something, there's a naivety, there's a newness, and it, you just can't replicate it. And it's so good when when TV captures that, and then you become like Shep, where you're just like you know it's you've been on it, and then you just feed the beast. You're like whatever it takes. Feed the beast. Yeah, <laughs> no, that's funny. I, I will say I I am aware of Kathy Hilton's like ascension right now like I, i've i it tells me on my instagram it's like she's like because i follow a lot of these blogs you become you kind of become friends with them you know like they're sure. like, very nice i mean if they're like nice to you or whatever um i've seen that though good good for her oh my god she's she has the quality that you do where it's like she almost doesn't know the cameras are there she's observing and then she just says all this shit you know she'll just come in and start telling everyone how to live their life or you know or she's completely unaware of any technology you know so she's there with like her cell phone upside down trying to facetime it's just so genuine you're like this is amazing anyway people people love her i heard she's just like the best casting choice ever and that's great she hopped on it one night i did this thing and it was like I'll make this quick. And then yeah, you know, I, the beach. But they did this thing and they were like, we want you to be on it. And it was kind of like this, but it was live. It was live during the finale. And it was like, boom, boom, boom. And then Craig, and you can see how many people are watching it. It's like Instagram live. And then I get on it. And it's just like the numbers tank. You know what I mean? And I'm like, <laughs> Oh, even to the point where Craig's like, I'm, I'm like laughing about it with the guy. I'm like, dude, I'm tanking your whole thing. Nobody wants this. And he's like, and then Craig's like, I'm here for you, buddy. 
And then, uh, and then Kathy Hilton jumped on. And I don't know if she was watching it, but she hopped on the feed and was like, hey there. It was very, you know, she, she from what we you just told me, she has no clue what she was doing. She, you know, she, she probably was talking to her, I don't know, whatever. She probably robot. didn't even know. Like, she was probably thinking that she was logging on to something at Paris Hilton's and then she randomly clicked on your thing. She's like, hi. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And she's, that's what, that's what, she's like, hey there, everybody. She had no clue. So, um, TV treasure. Now, you are team TV Kathy. Team, team Kathy. Kathy. Team Pringle. Yeah. Team Kathy. Oh. All right. Well, thank you for having me. You I were awesome. Everything you'd hope for. Pringle. Sorry, I missed the last one. It was great. No worries at all. Do not apologize. TV treasure. Uh, you enjoy the weekend with your boys. Thank you, Pringle. Bye. See ya. You were awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs>